Okay, lesson 17. The class learns to combine the velocity properties of sprites with the counter pattern to create more complex sprite movement, such as simulating gravity, making a sprite jump, and allowing a sprite to float left or right. All right, let's check out level two. Okay, so we're going to make a prediction. I guess last time I predicted sprite one will move slowly to the right. Uh, yeah, that looks like it makes sense. Oh, okay, it got increasingly faster, though. Very interesting. Why? Oh, because it's the counter pattern. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> Velocity and the counter pattern. As you just saw, here, oh, looks like, oh. Using a sprite.velocityx property with the counter pattern will change a sprite's velocity during the program. This makes the sprite speed up. Uh, this makes the sprite speed up. Do a little practice using this pattern yourself. Okay, so do this. This program already makes a car move across the screen, but it's going very slowly. Use the counter pattern with the sprite's velocity x property to make the car speed up. So I think we're going to do that right here in the code, but it says show me where. Yeah, okay. So the counter pattern, as we know. So we're going to do car dot velocity x equals car dot velocity x plus one uh, and it should do the same thing that we saw in the last level whoops here, let's get this out of here so it should do the same thing as we saw in the last level it'll start slow and then it'll get increasingly fast so let's put 0.5 in here you can put whatever number you want but I put 0.5 so it got increasingly fast. If you do 0.1, you can see it a little better. It's slowly getting faster. All right. <laughs> Falling rock. The rock should speed up as it falls down the screen. Can you use the same counter pattern with velocity y inside the draw loop to make the rock go faster and faster as it falls? So again, we're just doing the draw the uh, the counter pattern. Use the counter pattern with the sprite's y velocity to make the sprite speed up as it falls. Again, we're going to do it right here. All right, so can you make the rock spin as it falls? Yes, I can, but I don't think I'm going to do that in this video. Let's see, sprite.velocity y equals, and I'm not even going to bother getting math. I'm just going to do, oh, it's not going to work. Okay. So we do need math. sprite is called rock and remember we are editing the y value um what is it plus or minus that makes it go down increasing it makes it goes down so we'll do point one again rock rock all right that doesn't look realistic though let's do point five That looks, yeah, that looks more realistic. Um, yeah, let's, okay, rotation speed. I think that's probably what makes it spin. So let's do rock rotation speed. We'll say one. Let's see. Yep, that was spinning. <laughs> Rising bubble. This program makes a bubble rise up in the water. Can you make it get faster as it rises. Again, this is the counter pattern. Use the counter pattern and the sprite's y velocity to make the bubble move up more quickly. Okay, so it's bubble. The name of the sprite is bubble dot velocity. And I guess that's a negative because yeah, the y value decreases. So bubble equals bubble dot velocity y minus let's say 0.5 yeah there it goes cool slowing things down now that you've had some practice speeding things up can you use the counter pattern to slow sprites down 
Ah, okay, so we're going to make uh, this, this car that's driving towards the ocean. We're going to make it hit the brakes. Do this. The car is going to run into the water. You'll need to use the counter pattern to slow it down. Use the sprite dot velocity x blocks block, yeah, block with the counter pattern to slow the car down by 0.25 as it moves across the screen. What do you think will happen when the car finally stops? Um, I don't think anything will happen. Okay, uh, so let's see. So, use the sprite. Okay, let's see. Velocity X. I would imagine it's called car. Yes, it is. So, they already have a velocity of 10. So, do we want to make it negative 0.25? Remember, that's what's going on. We're doing negative uh, 0.25. I'm not sure. I'm going to try negative 0.25 first. R dot velocity x minus point two five. Hopefully, let's see. Okay, cool. All right, it went backward. Add a code that makes the car slow down only if its velocity x is greater than zero. Okay, that would be an if else statement. I'm pretty sure. If Hmm. Uh, try, try to do the challenge yourself. It doesn't sound too difficult, but I do not have a lot of time to make this video, so I'm going to move on. I do believe you need an if-else statement to do that. Simulating gravity. In the last level, you slowed down the car with sprite.velocityx eh, block and the counter pattern. It almost looked like the car was getting pulled to the left. If you use the same pattern with the sprite dot velocity y block, it will look like your sprite is always being pulled down, which is exactly what gravity does. So if you think about it, that's what you want in games. You're jumping around, so you want gravity. You want to simulate gravity. Do this. The rock is thrown in the air, but it never falls back down. Use the sprite dot velocity y block with the counter pattern to make the rock slow down and then fall in the other direction. All right. Uh, so, where is it? Sprite dot velocity y. And what is that increasing? Yep, we want to increase the y value to make it fall. So we're going to do same thing. Uh, sprite dot velocity. All right, rock here. Yeah, rock, rock. Plus, uh, let's say point five. Okay, slow down and fall in the other direction. Okay, so I want to point out the reason it's going up at first is because they set the velocity at the beginning to negative 10. All right, you see that? That's why it's getting thrown in the air at first. But the code that I added makes it fall back down. Okay? Experiment with different values in your counter pattern. Do you want the rock to slow down quickly or gradually? What looks most realistic to you? I think 0.5 looks pretty realistic. Why are you setting the rock's initial velocity outside the draw loop? That's exactly what I just pointed out. And that's because you want it to look like it starts out being thrown in the air. Jumping. Increasing a sprite's y velocity inside the counter pattern can simulate gravity. By adding user interactions, you can make your sprite appear to jump as well. For starters, you'll make a single jump, a simple jump, and then make it more realistic looking in the next level. Do this. A sprite has already been created for you that falls because its y velocity is increased inside the draw loop. You'll need to make this sprite appear to jump. Okay. Okay, so it's falling because its velocity is set inside the draw loop with this counter pattern. Okay, so do this. A sprite has already been created. Yeah, we already said that. You'll need to make the sprite appear to jump inside the if block that checks whether the up arrow has been pressed. Okay, that's right here. Set the sprite's y velocity to negative 5. Okay, so... All right, uh, let's... Here. 
what's it called? Character. Character. Uh, click in here. Negative 5. Okay, I did that. Discuss with a neighbor. Why does this code run the way it does? How, sh how would using a number besides negative 5 affect the way the code works? How could you jump higher or lower? Okay, so press up on your keyboard. And it gives it a little bit of a, a bounce. Okay. All right, well, let's see what would happen if we did negative 1. Okay, the jump isn't as big. Okay. And if we did negative 10, the jump would be very large. Okay. Da -da -da! <laughs> Floating right. You are now using the counter pattern with the sprite's y velocity to simulate gravity and jumping. If you use the sprite's x velocity in the counter pattern, then you can make your sprite float from side to side as well. Okay, so do this. In this level, you'll make your sprite start floating to the right when the right arrow is pressed. Add an if statement inside your draw loop below the one you created for the up arrow. Okay, you can copy and paste if you want. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create my own. Use the key down block to make the if statement respond when the right arrow is pressed. So we're doing the same thing right here, except we're not using key went down for some reason. We're using key down. And they want us to do right. Okay, so we did those. Inside the if block, use the counter pattern with the sprite.velocity x block to add point 0.1 to the sprite's x velocity. Okay, so character.velocity x equals. Uh, sprite dot velocity x. All right, character. Character. Point one. Okay. Run your code. See how it works. The sprite should be floating to the right. Yeah, it kind of is. This negative 10 is too high. we got to change that to negative 5. All right. All right, so, yep, it's floating to the right. All right, you'll make the left arrow work in the next level. All right, so we're doing floating left now. You're doing the same thing we did in the last level. Okay, so I am going to copy and paste here. Copy it, click out, enter, paste, and just change this left. Okay, and remember, we got to change this to a negative. Now you should be good. I think that's that's about it for this level. It's floating to the right. Cool. Now we got to make it float to the left. Keep pressing the left key. Yep. All right. All good. Add code to your own. Yep. We're good on this level. <laughs> Add a coin. Okay, this is cool. In the next few levels, you'll add to your program to make a simple game. In this game, the player will collect points to increase the score. This is a good chance to see how different kinds of movement can affect the way a game feels. And it will also just help you practice programming skills. Do this. In this level, you'll just be adding a new coin sprite to the game. You should be working at the top of your program, outside the draw loop. 